get ready for Flight 4 of Starship. This is what Elon Musk just confirmed after SpaceX completed the second static fire test in less than three days. He also revealed the new insane goal for Starship Flight 4 that is unlike any other. Just two days ago, SpaceX completed its first static fire test with the S-29 after successfully activating all six Raptor engines. All these procedures you can view again in the previous episode, but after the test, signs for a second test appeared. On March 26th, the new road closure schedule was updated. The March 25th closure was concluded and March 26th, was revoked. However, March 27th still retains the possible closure status, even though SpaceX completed the test. And right on that day, the predictions for the second static fire test came true. A new road closure update was issued, adding a new road closure date of March 28th, in addition to the previous March 27th. Right after that, a new potential risk to health and safety alert appeared and it determined March 27th would be the day for the test with a time frame from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening. The specific time was determined, and now we will focus on the latest test process. From the morning of the 27th, in order to prepare for the test, the roads were closed and the test pad was cleared. At approximately 12.13 p.m. Central, the tank farm began operating and we could see fuel starting to be vented from the fuel tanks. At about 12.51, the process of loading liquid oxygen fuel on the ship began with the appearance of the vapors. Just a few minutes later, those lines clearly appeared in the fuel tank section of the ship. The engine chill process then carried on as usual. After all preparations were completed, at about 1.30 in the afternoon, the engine was activated. Unlike the static fire on Monday, this time there was only one engine operating. Therefore, the flame generated as well as the dust layer was not as strong as it was in the previous test. The test duration was also quite short, at about only 6 seconds. With just a single engine, the estimated thrust was about 230 tons or 510,000 pounds. It can then be said that the test route of the S-29 is very similar to another prototype. We are talking about none other than the S-28. The Flight 3 prototype also went through two static fire tests last year with six engines on December 20th and one engine on December 29th. So why did SpaceX do this? These single engine tests allow SpaceX to test the engine's reliability for the de-orbit burn process. This step will take place after Starship completes all its orbital missions. The engine will be activated to put Starship into the atmosphere re-entry process. The in-space relight demo of the Raptor engine was also one of the goals for Flight 3, but SpaceX later canceled it and moved this mission to Flight 4. It can then be said that this process is the main focus for SpaceX. On the previous flight, S-28 had an impressive few minutes of re-entry before experiencing problems. That's why SpaceX wants to complete this task in the upcoming flight. Elon Musk said, Goal of this mission is for Starship to get through max re-entry heating with all systems functioning. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell also recently said that Flight 4 will not have satellites on board. Instead, SpaceX will focus on completing the Starship re-entry. It's safe to say that re-entry will be the main focal point of attention in Flight 4, and the recent static fire test is the first basis to create success for this attempt. Another special item in this test is the participation of the header tank. In the tweet after the test, they emphasized static fire of a single Raptor engine using the header tanks on Flight 4 Starship. Normally, tests will use fuel from the main tank, but this change is probably for SpaceX to test the reliability of the header when it is directly involved in the operation process. In Flight 3, SpaceX transferred fuel from the header to the main tank in orbit. However, specific data for this process has not been announced by SpaceX yet. Either way, this test is very useful for SpaceX to ensure every part of Starship will work well during the upcoming flight. After this test, it's speculated that S-29 will not undergo any static fire orchestras. It may be rolled back to the production site for some repairs. Or, it might just stay here and wait for booster B-11 to arrive at the launch site. B-11 is currently still at the production site Mega Bay 1. I believe with S-29's recent progress, this booster will soon be rolled to the launch pad to conduct static fire. The two stages will then be full stacked to conduct wet dress rehearsals and be ready for launch 
which is estimated for early May. In the latest update, NASA and SpaceX delayed the first Falcon Heavy launch of the year until no earlier than June 25th. The delay comes after the Sensor Core Boosters testing routine at SpaceX's rocket development and test facility in McGregor, Texas revealed a leak. This Falcon Heavy mission is responsible for launching the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's GOES-U weather satellite in GEO orbit. This mission was originally scheduled for the 30th of April. Then, on February 27th, NASA announced the flight would be postponed to May due to a reported liquid oxygen leak with the core booster. And now, it'll be pushed back again to June, perhaps in order to let SpaceX fix the problem and prepare for the mission. Despite the delay, relevant agencies still express optimism about the current progress. NOAA said on X, after addressing a liquid oxygen leak during booster testing, teams are back on track for this critical mission. In fact, the recent incident is understandable. All three boosters of Falcon Heavy in this mission are new, so it's difficult to avoid the initial problems. Currently, the boosters are still being brought to McGregor for a full round of testing, notably the full static fire. After those tests are completed, the rockets are moved to either Florida or California for their launch campaign. Because the three boosters on the next mission are all new, SpaceX will conduct another brief static fire at Launch Complex 39A ahead of launch. In the upcoming mission, the core booster B-1087 will be burned in orbit, while the two side boosters B-1072 and B-1086 will land in landing zones 1 and 2 like most previous flights. GOES-U will be the first of three Falcon Heavy missions planned for this year, the other two being NASA's Europa Clipper and Astrobotics Griffin Moonlander. Although launching fewer than last year, I feel that this year's Falcon Heavy missions are very important. There is a general consensus that this year's Falcon Heavy missions are very important, especially the lunar mission at the end of the year. Also related to the moon mission, NASA just revealed some very interesting information related to the mission for Artemis 3, a mission involving SpaceX. Specifically, NASA has chosen the first three science experiments to be deployed by astronauts on the moon's surface on the Artemis 3 mission in 2026, notably LEAF or LEAF, which is short for Lunar Effects on Agricultural Flora, which will study how space crops fare in the exotic lunar environment. As explained by NASA officials, LEAF will be the first experiment to observe plant photosynthesis growth and systemic stress responses in space radiation and partial gravity. Plant growth and development data, along with environmental parameters measured by LEAF, will help scientists understand the use of plants grown on the moon for both human nutrition and life support on the moon and beyond. This is considered an important step for humanity to determine the potential for living on this natural satellite. If the survival of plants in extreme environments can be proven, subsequent missions will advance this work. Plants will be an important factor to provide the oxygen necessary to provide the oxygen necessary for life as well as the self-sufficient food when settling on the moon as well as further discoveries. In addition to this mission, NASA also assigned two other missions, including the Lunar Environment Monitoring Station and the Lunar Dielectric Analyzer, or LDA. LEMS can be used to identify earthquakes and explore geology to predict the moon's evolutionary history. LDA, on the other hand, will be used to measure dust and gravel layers and electric fields. It will also determine water ice formation and subsurface structures as well as dielectric changes as the moon moves throughout space. Although selected, it is not certain that these three systems will fly on Artemis 3. Everything will only be determined after NASA makes an official decision in the next few days. As for Artemis 3, the mission is still scheduled for 2026. SpaceX is still ramping up the Starship system this year to aim to complete Starship HLS next year. They also planned an uncrewed Starship HLS demo in 2025 in preparation for the official mission, which will take place a year later. We're always on top of monitoring and updating the latest information about this particular mission. So stay tuned. Otherwise, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX. And until next time, keep looking up.